Good morning guys and welcome back. I'm going to show you how I took some of my beach shells from this season and turned this glass vase into this glass vase and before I get started I wanted to thank you guys. You've made my book on Amazon, the ebook Successful Decoupage Every Time a Bestseller. That is so exciting for me. And I want to let you know, you can go down below this to get the link to it. Turn your iPad or your iPhone or any smart device into a Kindle for free. And then you can download my book, but the book is about $4.99. And the reason that I wrote the book is because over the course of almost 10 years, I have gotten every question possible about decoupage. So I put all of those in the book. The book does not have pictures, but it does have links back to videos that will help you. And I still explain in the ebook why you might be getting the outcome you're getting, what problems you're coming up against. I discuss different papers, all of the questions I've gotten over the years. So if you're stumped about anything with decoupage, just check out that ebook, simple download, and that should help you out. Now, with all of that said, I'll show you how I did this project. And thank you again. Every once in a while, every YouTuber gets to the point where you say, should I keep doing this or not? Because it is not the most lucrative way to earn money. And I am not complaining. It's just that you sometimes just have to make these decisions. So when you guys subscribe, when you buy the ebook, when you go through my Amazon links to get any of your supplies or anything else you may need. That's all a big help. Okay, so to the video. Sometimes seashells are plain white and sometimes they're not. So if you find that your shells aren't completely white or they've got any markings on them, you can always use some glass chalk paint to cover them up. Or if you've got a shell that is very shiny with a slick surface, it always helps to add a bit of this chalky finish for glass paint. That will just make the decoupage stick even more. You don't need to do that if you've got just regular shells that look okay the way they are. So the next thing you want to do is select your napkin and don't worry about the pattern on the napkin. You want to be more concerned with the color of the napkin or the colors because you're not going to be able to see the images on these small shells. You're just going to want to tear them in all different sizes large enough to fit over your shell. And you just saw me using an aqua brush. You can also use a paintbrush, but I just took away all of those hard edges. So I'm just going to place my napkin. This is the top layer of the napkin only. You want to separate the other two pieces from the napkin. And I'm just going to go around it with the aqua brush and remove that one size. And now I'll decoupage it over the surface. You want to make sure you're using napkin decoupage glue. This sells out pretty quickly. I will put a link down below. I can't always find it at the craft stores. I actually sometimes have to send away for it. I contact the website. This napkin decoupage glue leaves the perfect finish because there's another brand out there that if you use it, it could everything could look plastic and it's it's not a nice finish. It gets gooey. It doesn't do well in the heat. So I always stick to this Americana napkin decoupage glue. And as always, I start in the center and work my way out. If you can follow the pattern of the shell, you see how there's ridges in the shell. If you can do that, that's fine, but you don't have to. You just want to be gentle because the napkins, obviously, they're very delicate and you want to make sure you don't tear them. But whoops, you can see I am using a lot of glue, which is what you need to do because you need it to soak through the napkin. Other decoupage glues are too thick. And when you try to push them through the napkin, they can easily tear and it becomes very frustrating. You also don't want to add water to a thicker glue because that also causes problems. And I'm not worried about these little wrinkles or overlaps here. So I'm going to do this to several shells enough to go around my vase and I'll put them aside to dry. Now, if you don't have shells or a seahorse like I do here, there are molds that you can buy and I'll put the links down below this video so that you can purchase these. I just wanted to add a little seahorse 
to my project and I think I used resin for this particular seahorse but you can use any air dry clay and I'll have the link down below for that also and once again using that napkin decoupage glue I'm just painting the napkin on using a lot of glue and going with the pattern of this seahorse. It's always a challenge when you're doing any kind of an artistic project on a video because you're looking through the camera into your hand. You've only got two hands and you're trying to do all of these focusing things. So I found that the easiest way for me to do this was I placed the shell down on this non-stick craft mat that I have and painted the shell on like I did before but then I took a spatula and scooped the shell up and I put it onto a baking sheet that had parchment paper on it and even though you don't have to do this when I'm making a video and I can I tend to put a lot of my objects in the oven. It's non-toxic. I only set the oven to 175 degrees Fahrenheit and I leave them in there to dry. That heat also helps any wrinkles to smooth out and it creates an even harder surface on the shells. So here are the shells now that they're dry and I'm just going to file away these leftover or excess edges. Now notice I am only going in one direction. I am pulling the file downwards. You don't want to go back and forth. That could pull your napkin away. So just make sure that you file down in the direction that you painted the napkin on. And as always, before I commit these shells to a permanent location, I just want to play around a little and see which direction I want them to go in or if I want any particular pattern. So I suggest you do that before you start to stick them onto what we're going to add onto the jar to keep these on, onto the glass rather, to keep these on here. I have some patching plaster and this is already pre-mixed. I always add too much water or not enough water when I get plaster so this is already pre-mixed. You do have to stir it up quite a bit so I did that. This took all of about two minutes to mix thoroughly. You can tell by the way it feels and looks when you're all done uh, just mixing it up so that it's all nice and creamy. Then you can just use whatever you have on hand. I just happen to have this silicone brush I'm not sure what to call it but it's like a brush but it's pure silicone and I spread this all over just the base and I wanted it to look kind of wavy like the sand or the ocean I, I'm putting something next to it because I don't want the vase to move and you also want to make sure you only work on one section at a time because if you stand this up before it dries the shells are going to fall off. The instructions say that it takes a half an hour to fully harden. That probably depends on the humidity levels also. So what I'm going to do is carefully place my shells on this one section, let it dry, and then I'm going to go around the rest of the vase and add my pre-mixed plaster. I swear I keep wanting to say pasta. I'm glad I caught myself because if I was a little bit more tired, you wouldn't believe the week we've had around here, I would have said, add your pasta. And you all would have said, what is she talking about? We've had trees come down, electricity out, cable out. I couldn't put a video up last week because the same thing happened last week with the tree coming down. Boy, is it fun. On the phone, uh, we have to leave our house to make a phone call because we can't get internet and everything's not working. Anyway, so not pasta, your pre-made plaster. <laughs> and by the way, this is I think it's called chipped glass or broken glass. It's got mirror on one side and I wanted to add it into the wet plaster while I'm doing this in between the shells. Now I wouldn't recommend this for a child but it's not really that sharp. The edge is where it's going to cut you. You still want to be careful with it and I ended up getting tweezers and adding a lot of this uh, with the tweezers because it was much 
easier. I was able to place the glass more in uh, these tiny spaces and places where I would rather they went. So I'm going to go around the rest of my vase and add the plaster and now the glass and the shells. And I'll let this side dry and then go around and do the other side, which I won't film. I'm just going to show you a little bit of how I use the tweezers to put the glass on here. And I'll see if I can find a link for that down below. You can normally find it in craft stores. If you don't see the link down below, just check your local craft store. So everything's dry now. I've got the glass chips added on there. Doesn't that look beautiful? I love the decoupage shells, but I also love how this mirrored glass is really giving it a bunch of sparkle. By the way, I wanted to hang this while it was drying before the one side, so I just made this makeshift weird thing where I put a heavy bulk on a ruler and napkins under the ruler and put it up like this. You can come up with any other idea you have to, to let, let this dry. I didn't want it to sit up while it was drying because some things could slide off. So I'm sure you have your own ideas of what to do. That's just what I did. So I want to add something here. I took a two-part resin and poured it over the surface. I know my hand's in the way. The two-part resin is something you really should have a little bit of experience with before you do this. And you can see underneath, I'm making a little wreath with the excess shells. But you can also paint triple thick on here. I wanted it as an extra coating so that it would work like glue. The reason I'm using the two-part resin is because I have this little amount left uh, of these two bottles that I just wanted to finish up and get rid of. I'm trying to get rid of things. So now that everything is dry, look at the sparkle on this. I believe that what happened here, if you notice the glass chips turned from silver to a gold color. I had to put heat on the two-part resin, which takes about 24 hours to dry. And it is beautiful once you're done. But I had to put heat on it to remove any air bubbles. And the glass chips went from silver to an amber color, which I still love and they're still highly reflective. But that is how I got all of this done. I decoupaged the shells and put them in the plaster. And that's our video for the week, guys. I am so excited about you guys getting that ebook. That, that just really made my day. And don't forget, Upcycle with Decoupage is on Facebook. If you go over and like and follow the page, Facebook will let you know when I put a new video out. Sometimes I have announcements, sometimes I can't make videos, and I'll tell you what's going on. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys had an amazing holiday sending off the summer. We here on the East Coast had beautiful weather. Again, I'm sorry I cannot respond to all of the questions. I try to get to all of the comments. I can at least read those. Uh, I mean, I try to give like a little heart or respond if I can. Uh, that's, that's a little challenging these days, but I still love that I hear from you guys and some of you I hear from so often and I'm very happy to hear from you. So uh, thanks a lot. Thanks again, you guys. Check out the links down below and I hopefully will be able to make another video for next week. My husband finally got called back to work, which is a very good sign and it's allowing me to be able to speak into some of my videos rather than constant interruptions when he was home and working on so many projects. So hopefully guys, I'll see you next week. Take it easy. Bye-bye.